Could an ancient civilization here on the Earth have tried to reconnect the broken bond between the heaven and the Earth? Gobekli Tepe and the Giza Plateau, a testament to the proof that the ancients of our world were not primitive, yet we do not know what their places are or why they functioned. In the mind of Kronos, they were trying to re-establish a connection that became broken and perhaps clues can be found in Isaiah 14.12 when it reads How you have fallen from heaven, O Daystar, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground, O destroyer of nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. Could it be that the ancients were creating places like Giza and Gobekli Tepe as replicas of the cosmic mountain that emanated from the assembly of the gods in a magical attempt to bring back the lost golden age? Remember the archetype of the separation of heaven and earth? Heaven was the assembly of the gods and the cosmic mountain was the connection. Wait till you hear this. When looking for the squatter man, we don't have to look far. Every god who has ever been worshipped, in one respect or another, is an assimilated observation of the Taurus field. The people became exasperated, they have tried everything to regain the golden age, and so dawns on humanity an extended period of chaos, from which empires would emerge in Egypt and Mesopotamia. The god Ra shone over the golden age. And when Set kills Osiris in the Osiris myth, then this is most likely a description of something striking the god whom once shone over the earth, bringing the cataclysm. All of the gods hereafter become part of the manifestation, and earth observers begin the remembrance, which over time assimilates culture into religion. The events become forgotten, and the questions emerge. Did gods once walk the earth? No, they were all in the sky. The ancients saw all of these gods in the sky. Now it's up to us to attempt to understand and re-establish this lost history. Consider Anubis. Anubis was concerned with funerary practices and the care of the dead, and he was usually represented as a jackal or as a man with the head of a jackal. And the association of jackals with the dead and funerals likely arose because Egyptians may have observed jackals scavenging around cemeteries or mass graves during the Squatterman event. And this connection is a remembrance of events connecting the jackals to places where the dead were placed. Thought, on the other hand, the god of writing and wisdom, could be depicted in the form of a baboon or a sacred ibis or as a man with the head of an ibis. He was believed to have invented language and the hieroglyphic script and to have served as scribe and advisor for the gods. And the symbols in the hieroglyphics may have been directly taken from the shapes playing out in the sky. And from these shapes, words are formed to describe what they are seeing, and this language is probably coming from this event. An underworld scene showing the judgement undergone by the deceased after their deaths. Thought is depicted as weighing the hearts of the deceased and reporting the verdicts to Osiris the god of the dead, but remember, Osiris was also Ra before the squatter man manifested. The gods become assigned to the things that they are connected with, as observed on the earth. And the stories are formed probably as ways to describe these very harsh events to children and education systems of the time. But this all keeps assimilating right up into our thing, when we still worship the gods who once appeared in the sky. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.